Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about arc length parameterizations of curves. And so we've looked at some videos where we've calculated arc length of a curve, so the distance between a starting point and an ending point along a curve. But this is a little bit different. Uh, it's related to that, but it's not exactly the same. So we wanna think about an arc length parameterization of a curve. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the main idea before I get into the actual calculations that we're gonna do here. So the main idea is that I might have some sort of a curve, and that curve might be parameterized by an R of t function. And I drew this curve with maybe my starting point here, maybe that corresponds to t equals zero. And for an object moving along that curve, if t represents time, it might be time, or it might just be some other parameter, uh, perhaps I start here at t equals zero, and then maybe by t equals one, I've gone this far, just a little ways around the curve. And then maybe the object is speeding up as we move along here. So in this one unit of time, it's just traveled a little distance, but in that next unit of time, maybe it travels quite a bit further, and then maybe quite a bit further in another unit of time, and then, and so on. Um, so the basic idea here is that I have a parameterization of the curve that is really based on time and describes a kind of motion along this curve. So maybe speeding up in this case, or maybe slowing down, or moving at a constant speed, or speeding up and then slowing down. Um, but it's really describing a particular motion along this curve. But if what I want to do is really describe the geometry of the curve, then I really want to strip away that time component of that motion, and I want to think about this curve more in terms of the geometry of the curve. So that's really what an arc length parameterization is. It's a way of stripping away the time component of what we're describing in terms of motion here, and really describing the curve in terms of geometry of the curve. All right, so when I do an arc length parameterization, essentially what I'm gonna do is start with a parameterization R of t that generates this curve, and then we're gonna calculate what's called an arc length parameterization, and we're gonna get a new parameterization for the curve. Uh, so a new R parameterization, but it's gonna be parameterized in terms of arc length, and we use a standard letter for arc length, which is maybe not the letter you would think about, S, we use S for an arc length parameterization. So anytime you see any of the formulas later in the chapter, if they are written in terms of S, you should know that that's an arc length parameterization. The basic idea is that I now want to get a new parameterization of this curve that is based on distance, arc length. So we need to decide what we are calling one unit of length. So I just drew uh, uh, marked off a scale here and said, okay, so if that's one unit of length, what I want to do is re-parameterize this curve in terms of distance traveled along the curve, one unit of length. All right, so uh, I'm gonna get a new parameterization of the curve. It's gonna be given in terms of S. I probably would want to start at the same starting point here so that my S equals zero maybe corresponds with my t equals zero, although there might be times where you wanna start your arc length parameterization somewhere else, say at t equals two. But in the absence of a reason to put it somewhere else, uh, we usually start our s equals zero parameterization at the same place we started at when t was equal to zero. And then I'm gonna take that one unit of distance and measure off how far along the curve we go. I'm just estimating here that one unit of distance along the curve, maybe I end up about right there. Uh, so one unit of distance, so I should travel one unit along the curve, and that would correspond to my s equals one. It's an arc length parameterization, so it's based on distance traveled along the curve. And then I want my next increment, when s equals two, to be roughly that same distance along the curve. So I'm just estimating here whatever that distance is along the curve, and then s equals three, and then another increment along the curve. So the basic idea is that I'm gonna get a new set of parametric equations for the curve that is based on distance traveled along the curve rather than a particular kind of motion along the curve.
This is useful when you really want to study the geometry of the curve. So if you think about uh, an on-ramp for a highway or a racetrack or any kind of curve that has some bend to it, and you really want to think about being able to describe the geometry of that independent of a particular kind of motion, somebody going fast or slow or speeding up or slowing down along that curve. So this is what we're after. Um, and so then what we want to talk about is the mechanics of how to do that. All right, so I'm going to write something down here and then we'll look at an example as well. So you should recall that you have a formula for calculating arc length and the arc length parameterization, basically I need an equation that will relate t, my t variable, to my s variable. And so provided I have a smooth parameterization, r of t, uh, then I can get my relationship between s and t by using an arc length integral here. Uh, so I'm going to have an integral, s, that's the s that's here, is going to be an integral, and I'm going to start that integral at t naught. That might be zero, or it could be wherever you want to start, but wherever you start at, that's going to correspond to your s equals zero. So that will be your t value that corresponds with s equals zero. And I'm going to integrate from that number, so I will probably start mine at t equals zero here, to t. And I'm going to leave that as a variable. So that's going to be a variable t, variable t. Uh, and then I'm going to integrate the arc length formula. So I can write that as the square root of a bunch of stuff squared, bunch of derivatives squared. Or I'm going to, just to shortcut this a little bit, write it in that alternate notation, the magnitude of the velocity vector. Okay, so when we wrote that arc length formula, we had the magnitude of velocity of t. But you should remember from calculus one and maybe even calculus two that when you're doing an integral and you have a variable in your limit of integration, it's not good syntax to have that same variable here in the integrand. So I'm going to do sort of just introduce a dummy variable here. Uh, I'll use u. Our textbook uses something else. Uh, but I'm just going to use u. That u is essentially just a dummy variable taking the place of t here, so I don't have the same variable here. So this is really the arc length integration formula. The difference here is instead of integrating from a number to a number, I'm going to be integrating from a number to the letter t. When I do this, it'll give me a relationship, an equation that relates s and t to each other, and then I can use that to translate my r of t parameterization of a curve into an R of S parameterization of the curve. Okay, so we're going to look at an example here. So uh, we're going to do R of T is cosine of T, sine of T, and 2 thirds T to the 3 halves, where T is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so first of all, I need to make sure that I have a smooth parameterization. And then secondly, what I want to do is set up this uh, conversion that will convert from T parameterization to an S parameterization. So in order to do both of those, I need my velocity vector or my R prime vector here. Okay, so I need to make sure I have a smooth parameterization, so I need to make sure that this r prime is continuous, that is continuous on this interval t greater than or equal to zero, all of these component functions are continuous. And this r prime vector is never the zero vector, although these two are zero at the same t value when t equals zero, that will not make this middle component equal to zero, so this is never equal to the zero vector, and it is continuous. So we do have a smooth parameterization uh, for this problem. Okay, so now what I want to do is set up this conversion formula here. So I'm going to write S equals, and I'm going to integrate from wherever I want to start at. So here, this is starting at t equals zero. So I'm going to start at t equals zero. That will make my S equals zero correspond to the same point where t is equal to zero. I'm going to integrate from zero to t, leaving that as a variable. And then the magnitude of this velocity vector, I'm going to use u as a dummy variable just so I have better syntax here. All right, so I'll have the square root of 
uh, this this expression squared. So negative sine squared. I will that when I square the negative, I'll get a positive. So I'll have sine squared of u plus cosine squared of u plus u to the one half squared will be just u. Okay, uh, and again, uh, yet again, here we have the Pythagorean identity, which we keep seeing over and over again. That simplifies. This all just collapses to just one. So I have this integration, zero to t of square root of one plus u du. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this integral. Uh, technically, I need a little substitution here to do this integral. Maybe you can take care of that in your head. I might use a W substitution instead of a U substitution since I already have U's here. So I'd let W equal the expression inside the radical. DW would be DU, and you can handle the integration from there. If you need to write that substitution out, then go ahead and do it. I'm gonna just try to do that in my head here. Uh, okay, so uh, this expression to the one-half, when I integrate that, I will have two-thirds times that expression to the three-halves. And then that's going to be evaluated from zero to t. I'm going to plug in my t and my zero. All right, and then when I plug in zero, uh, I'll get one plus zero is one. One to the three-halves is just one times the two-thirds, so I'll have minus two-thirds. All right, so at this point, I've got my conversion formula that helps me convert from R of T to R of S. Some of the online homework problems actually ask you just to come up with this, so you might pay attention to exactly what they're asking you for there. But then the real point of that is that I can use that to rewrite my parameterization that's here, given R of T, rewrite that in terms of s. So in general, you're just gonna have to do some algebra here. So you just follow through whatever algebra is appropriate. Uh, I'm gonna choose to multiply through by 3 halves because that will clear these two fractions. Uh, so I would have 3 halves s equals 1 plus t to the 3 halves minus 1. Here, if I multiply through by 3 halves, and then if I add 1, undo this exponent, and then subtract 1, I'm going to skip a little bit of that algebra here. Uh, so I will have t equals, uh, let's see, I'll have 3 halves s plus 1, uh, and that will all be to the 2 thirds power when I undo this 3 halves power here, and then I'll have to subtract 1 to isolate the t. Uh, so when I do the algebra to solve this expression for t, this should be what I get here. So just have to be careful with that algebra. And again, the whole point of that is that I want r given in terms of s. I want this arc length parameterization. So the last step would be to put all of this into my original parameterization in place of t. So this one's going to look a little messy, but I'm going to go ahead and write it out here. So I'll have cosine of all of this. the i component, and then sine of all of that, and the j component, and then in the k component, two-thirds times all of this, to the three-halves power. And that would be, uh, yeah, I close my parentheses, that would be for s greater than or equal to zero, since our s equals zero corresponded to our t equals zero. Okay, so here I now have an arc length parameterization, and you might be saying that is a mess. That's actually kind of the point of this example. Uh, in general, converting to arc length parameterizations is messy, and this problem is less messy than some might be. Notice on my integral, I had some very nice simplifications that made this integral easy to do. But in general, if you have an expression inside a radical and you're trying to integrate that, in general, that might be pretty difficult to do that integration. The other place that sometimes can be very difficult is the algebra here, where I took this relationship that gave t as a function, s as a function of t, and I solved it so that I have t as a function of s, that algebra can sometimes be very difficult 
or maybe even impossible to do. And so the point here is not so much that we will often do this, although you should be able to do one that's not too terrible bad, uh, but the point is really to understand that this is possible and what the purpose of that is. It's again to strip away the particular time par portion of emotion along this curve and be able to think about it really in terms of the geometry of what's going on with this curve. So there's a lot of things that we will look at later in this chapter that are really defined in terms of an arc length parameterization. So if you understand what is the purpose of the arc length parameterization, that helps you understand those other things that we're gonna look at later that are defined in terms of that.